All right. Hi guys, I'm Colsey, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new NVIDIA Broadcast app. It's actually really cool. It's been something I've been super interested in taking a look at ever since I heard that it was something that they were working on. Uh, and now it is finally released so that we can take a look at it. It's been a fairly good time for gaming in general uh, recently. We've had the PS5 and the new Xbox both go up for pre-orders and both be shown and announced. Obviously, you have to announce them before you can pre-order them. Anyway, they have been both uh, announced and put up for pre-order and instantly sold out. And as well as that, for us PC gamers out there, the PC Master Race, uh, you know, use code Colsey5 uh, for PC to join the PC Master Race because we all know that's that's where the true gamers are at. We've had the new NVIDIA 30 series or 3000 series, don't know how you want to say it, uh, graphics cards, which are a huge step up in performance we're talking 8k gaming but that's not what we're talking about today necessarily um but it is just something to reference uh the, the nvidia broadcast uh, app i don't know whether it's an app or a program whatever you want to call it on pc uh has released with the release of the new 3080 cards from nvidia the rtx 3080s to run the broadcast app uh, you do have to have an rtx card so that can be as low as the rtx 2060 which is what i have uh, but it completely goes up into the newer RTX 30 series cards as well. A video a while ago, I looked at the RTX voice stuff that they did, which again was similar to this. You had to have an RTX card, uh, but it was to do with removing background noise from your microphone and also from your headphones or your speakers. I guess in a way they've built on that. In the NVIDIA broadcast app, it does have a section for microphone and speakers, which is it's in its it's mixing of RTX voice in with the new camera feature, according to what I'm looking at here. So this is in beta, uh, but I have played around with it last night when I installed it and I'm actually very, very impressed with it. What you're looking at here now is I am using my camera, which is a mirrorless camera, a Lumix G7. This is the camera I normally use for streaming and recording and stuff. This is, this is like standard raw, what the camera looks like. Now I have put a couple of filters on in OBS because that's what I normally do. A little bit of color correction and then a, a LUT on top of it. Basically, I've changed the coloring slightly to make it look more like I want it to look. It's basically raw. It's just had a bit of color correction. So at the minute, we do have no broadcast features running. Now I will show you the broadcast app. Uh, let's just go ahead and look at the broadcast app real quick. I can, I'm, I'm just doing this all editing live because I can't be asked to edit this and record separate screens. Uh, after the fact so here we go this is this is the broadcast app you're looking at see now where we have a section for microphone where we can have noise removal it's literally the only effect we can have you can record and sample so you can hear how much it's going to change your voice and stuff if you want to do that same for speakers again same difference noise removal play different samples to hear okay so this you can play samples annoying noises like chip bags fans rain typing etc you can play those it's going to play an annoying sound and then also it's going to be able to remove that so you're going to be able to hear what it sounds like anyway that's not what we want to do today uh we've done that before if you want to check that out go check out the rtx voice i'm sure it's as good i was very impressed at the time with rtx voice so i'm sure it's only got better since then but today we're looking at the camera specifically because this is the thing i'm excited about so the thing i heard about this originally was the fact that you would be able to remove a background without having to use a green screen now normally uh, you would have to do this with a green screen and green screens have got better we've got those collapsible ones now i don't actually have one of those unfortunately because that would be ideal for my office but i did used to use a green screen uh, in my old office at my old house on the wall and i used to use that green screen myself out all the time now with this new office and this new house i've got a lovely painted custom wall behind me that we did uh, and so i don't really want to ruin it by putting a green screen behind me so you can never see it uh, i've kind of gone for more of a a real life this is my office kind of look but for some things it would be nice for streams and stuff it'd be nice sometimes to be able to just green screen myself out and put myself in the corner and just be there and not be too much of a pain in the ass or blocking anything with with the whole square camera so that's what i'm excited about because i don't want to have to pop out a green screen every time that i want to use it sometimes i don't know if i'm going to want to use a green screen i might on the fly go you know what a green screen would work here and if i was green screened it would look better but then i'm not going to fiddle around for 20 minutes setting it up switch back to the camera okay full camera with full cameraing here we are we're good right so you've seen the software it's very very simple uh you know what i'll just i'll just briefly show you this again because it's super quick so before we move on and actually look at how these things affect the camera we'll look at the effects so we've got background blur background replacement background removal and auto frame uh we can turn these on and there's there's little bars on strength and in particular for uh 
that's strength for the blur, how blurry the background is going to be. And for auto frame, there is actually a uh, bar for zoom. And you'll see how that works. Background blur, the idea is that you're going to want, you want to create like a nice DSLR, like an actual camera look. Now I am actually using a camera, so I kind of do get a bit of blur in the background anyway. The more distance you have and the, the more you zoom and the lens you use can create a bigger blur uh, in the background. But I already have an okay blur, I guess. It's a, it's a little blurred. But if you, maybe you're using a webcam or maybe you're using something that isn't a camera, something that doesn't give you the option of making this like this really nice background blur to separate you from the background. Well, now we can do that by the click of a button. This is standard normal camera. Like I said, I'm gonna now click the button. It's about half strength and it's gonna blur the background. Boom, done, done. Background's blurred. Look at that blurry boy. Even the thing is that I find incredible is like when I put my hand up, it still does a great job of blurring around my hand. Like it doesn't blur my hand out, but it does blur the background. So that's slightly, that's more blurry than it was before. And it does look nice. It looks cool. Like if I turn it off, you can see that that chair immediately comes into focus. And if I blur it again, immediately out of focus. It knows that this is my chair behind me. It knows not to blur this. It doesn't blur the chair, it doesn't blur me, but it blurs everything behind me. And it does look super cool. And if we whack it all the way up to the top, that's full blur. That's the full blur effect. The whole background is blurred. It almost doesn't look right. It almost looks like I've green screened the background into the video and then blurred it. You know what I mean? That, that, that looks fake. That doesn't look real. Uh, and the effect of it being around my hand, if I move my hand fast, you can see that it's, it's, it, it's doing a good job, but it's not completely keeping up with with like the blurring. You can see that around me, it's kind of, it freaks out for a second, but then it does a pretty good job of catching up pretty quick, but I wouldn't have it that blurry anyway. I'd probably go down to like, maybe like here. I think that looks kind of realistic. Uh, and then like, if I wave my hand around, you can see it's not such a big effect. That's the background blur. That's pretty cool. I think that actually looks really, really good. Uh, and, and that's a great effect and it's super easy and you don't need to have an expensive camera and stuff to do it. You could literally just do this with a webcam. The software just takes in your camera source. Mine obviously goes to a capture card to use this camera, but if it's a webcam or whatever, uh, you just select that as the camera source and then you uh, apply these effects. The next effect, uh, possibly the one that interested me most was the, the green screen without having to have a green screen. It's gonna remove the background. Now there's two settings for this. There's background replacement and there's background removal. So replacement literally is removing the background and putting an image or a video there. So if you wanted to do that uh, in the software rather than doing it in OBS, for example, you could do that. But in my case, I'm just gonna use the removal to show you that you can remove it really easily uh, and then add an effect in OBS if you want afterwards. I have added an image behind me now in OBS. So when I do add the uh, background removal, when I turn it on, uh, there'll be an image behind me that you'll be able to see. I'm gonna turn on background removal now. And there we go. Now, it's not perfect. There's some like fringing around the edges and you can see like if I move my thumb and when you have like your hand like this, it does not a bad job. There's a bit of like fringing around the edges and fast movement makes it weird. Uh, but all in all, actually not terrible. Like it's, it's like a, it's very much like using a green screen at home. I could probably get a better job with my green screen if I got my green screen out and used that. But because it saves me a bunch of time and I don't have to do that, this isn't bad. Like you can see the image behind me. If I turn off the image, we'll go back to the display. Uh, you can see that if I was gonna use this on stream, obviously I'd probably put myself like in the corner or something. So I'd probably, I'd probably be shrunk down and down here and I'd be playing a game. Like this actually looks pretty damn good. Like when you're this small, the actual artifacts and stuff around it don't make so much of a difference. You can't really see them as much. And it's actually really cool. The fact that this is not using a green screen, this is just, this is just from the graphics card doing it. It's, it's kind of mad. I'm looking at my GPU and how much this is using. So to be fair, OBS Studio is using most of my GPU at the minute to record this. Uh, but Nvidia Broadcast and Nvidia Virtual Camera together is probably using about 6% of my GPU. Uh, total. Right, let's put me back to big size. Big Colsey. Hello, I'm back. Looks pretty dope. Looks pretty dope. I like it. I like it a lot. I do like the fact that we can now use a green screen without having to have a green screen. I don't know how this is going to affect like those Elgato expandable green screens and stuff. It's like buy a better graphics card and you'll be able to do this without having to use any of those things. Right, the last feature that we're going to check out is 
auto frame. So auto frame, basically all it does is it follows your face. So it tracks your face and it will automatically frame the camera to have your face in the center of it. So if I zoom my camera out uh, and then I like walk back over there, uh, the, the camera will move and track and follow uh, where my face is and make sure I'm the center of the frame. Okay, camera zoomed out as far as it will go. That's as far as my lens will zoom out. It's fine, it's all good. Uh, and then we turn on auto zoom. You ready? All right, that's gonna zoom in. So you'll see that we're kind of almost back to where I was zoomed on the camera anyway. But the difference is if I move my face, if I move, the camera moves with me. So if I go, what? If I slow down, it, it follows me. That's pretty much the, uh, the features of uh, NVIDIA Broadcast at the minute. Like I said, it is only available on RTX cards, whether that's the older 20 series from the 2060 upwards or the new 30 series cards. You're gonna have to have one of those, but it's super cool. It's a really cool, useful feature. I think I'm gonna be using it more during streams and stuff because it gives me that ability to be able to do green screening again, which I haven't done for a while on streams and stuff. At least I'll probably, I'll probably set it up so that I have it as an option. So that if I decide midstream or as soon as I start a game, I decide there's a lot of a lot of stuff around the screen, and I feel like me being green screened in the bottom would be better than me being uh, rectangular, you know, in a corner or something. Then I'll probably have that set up so that I, ca I can change it on my stream deck and be like, no, we'll change to the green screen camera, and it will just sort that out for me. Uh, and because it's a separate source in OBS, um, for example, normally my camera, uh, like I said, it goes my camera goes through a capture card. So when I go into OBS, I select video capture device and the device I select is my capture card, which is a live game of mini. So I select that and that brings up my camera. Uh, so I can still do that, but then as a separate source, I can have a video capture device as a separate source, but instead of the source being the live game of mini, the source is actually Nvidia broadcast itself. So I can have one that's green screened permanently ready to go. But when I don't want to use that, I always have the other source which will just be the standard normal camera. I hope you enjoyed this little look at NVIDIA Broadcast. It seems pretty damn cool, and like it says, camera is in beta at the minute, so hopefully it's gonna improve in future, and maybe they'll get the green screen working a little bit better so there's less blurry artifacts around it, and it just can differentiate the background from the foreground a little bit better. Uh, it's not quite as good as you would get from a green screen, but then it is a lot simpler than the green screen, so I can understand uh, the temptation of using that. I probably will use that over a green screen, like I said. Like, I have a green screen that is like packed up in a little bag. I could pop that out behind me and set it up. The ease of just being able to click a button basically and that happen rather than having to get it out, unfold it, put it behind me, make sure it's lit properly, it's just a lot easier to use this software. If you guys want to check it out for yourself, I'll leave a download link in the description. If you want to get yourself a nice PC, then uh, go to Fierce PC and use code COLSY5 and you'll save yourself 5% on a PC. So uh, get yourself a nice RTX graphics card and you can run broadcast yourself and do all these green screen blur effects, all these fun things. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe if you did, and I'll see you guys next time.